हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज भावना खत्री एंड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू अ थ्योरम ऑफ फंक्शनल एनालिसिस एंड द थ्योरम इज दैट to prove that every metric space is not a non linear space to prove this theorem first of all we should know some definition like what is metric space non linear space after gaining these definitions in our mind we will prove that every non linear space is a metric space with respect to the metric defined by d of x y is equal to norm of x minus y and to prove this we will first of all prove all the four properties of metric space after proving the four properties of metric space we will come to a result that every non linear space is a metric space now to show its converse part that is every metric space is not a non linear space we will consider a function d of x y is equal to summation k is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by 2 k into mod of x k minus y k divided by 1 plus mod of x k minus y k where x is equal to x k and y is equal to y k first of all we will prove that d is metric on s and then we will prove that d is not a normed linear space after proving all this we will come to a result that every metric space need not to be a non linear space by following all these steps we can conclude that every metric space is not a non linear space so let's first of all define some definitions the first definition is of non linear space what is non linear space let n be a complex or real linear space by linear space we means a vector space and let norm of dot be a function from n to r positive real numbers such that for all x comma y belongs to n and alpha belongs to complex or real numbers we have these four properties satisfied this four properties satisfied <coughs> that is if we consider any n linear space and a in a function dot from n to r positive real number and if it is it is satisfied all the four properties then that linear space is called as a norm linear space the first property is that norm of x should be greater than equal to 0 second is norm of x is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to 0 third is norm of x plus y should be less than or equal to norm of x plus norm of y this is called triangle inequality or sub addit Activity. and the fourth is norm of alpha x is equal to mod of alpha into norm of x and this is absolute inequality then the function no, uh, and then this function is called a norm of on n and this is called a complex or a real normed linear space the real number norm of x is called norm of the x the second definition is of metric space let x be any arbitrary set a mapping d such that x cross x is mapped in r is said to be a metric or distance between distance function if and only if d satisfy the following axioms these four axioms the first is d of x y should be greater than or equal to 0 non negativity second is d of x y should be equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to y and the third is d of x y should equal to d of y x and this is called symmetric property and the fourth is d of x y should be less than or equal to d of x z plus d of z y for any x comma y comma z belongs to x if d is d is a metric for x then the ordered pair x d 
is called a metric space and dx y is called a distance between x and y now let's come to the proof of the theorem proof of the theorem we have already discussed the statement of the theorem that is every metric space is not a normed linear space now let directly come to the proof of the theorem to prove the theorem first of all we will prove that every normed linear space is a metric space and to prove that every normed linear space is a metric space we will consider a function dx y is equal to norm of x minus y for all x comma y belongs to n where n is any normed linear space where n is any norm linear space and we will satisfy this d all the four properties of metric space if this d will satisfy all the all the four properties of metric space then every norm linear space will be a metric space since n is a non linear space therefore x comma y belongs to n implies that x minus y belongs to n hence norm of x minus y is greater than or equal to 0 therefore d of x y is greater than or equal to 0 because d of x y x minus y is equal to norm of x minus y the second property is that d of x y is equal to 0 if and only if norm of x minus y is equal to 0 as d of x minus y is equal to norm of x minus y so this implies that x minus y is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to y the third property is that d of x y should be equal to d of y x y comma x so as d of x y is equal to norm of x minus y we can take out from here minus 1 and we, then we will get norm of minus 1 into y minus x this norm this minus 1 will come outside the norm and we will get mod of y minus x is equal to d of y comma x as mod of minus 1 is 1 now the fourth property the fourth property is that no, d of x y is less than or equal to d of x comma z plus d of z comma y now we will take norm of x minus y is equal to norm of x minus z plus z minus y it and it will be less than or equal to norm of x minus z plus norm of z minus y as the function d satisfy all the four properties of metric space therefore therefore d is a metric on n now to prove the converse part of the theorem we will first of all consider the sequence of scalars s s equal to x is equal to x k such that x k are scalars s is a sequence of scalars and now we will define a function d of x y is equal to summation k is equal to 1 to infinity into 1 by 2 k mod of x k minus y k divided by 1 plus mod of x k minus y k where x is equal to x k and y is equal to y k we will first of all prove that d is a metric metric space so it will be metric if and only if, if it satisfy all the four properties the first property is that d of x y should be greater than or equal to 0 obviously this is a summation function so this is a summation function so it will be always greater than or equal to 0 the second property is that d of x y should be 
will be equal to zero if and only if summation k is equal to one to infinity one by two k mod of x k minus y k divided by one plus mod of x k minus y k is equal to zero and it will be equal to zero if and only if mod of x k minus y k is equal to zero. So this implies that x is equal to y as x k is equal to x and y k is equal to y. Now the third property the third property is that d of x y should be equal to d of y x so we will consider d of x y is equal to summation k is equal to summation k is equal to 1 to infinity into mod of x k minus y k divided by 1 plus x k minus mod of x k minus y k from this we will take out minus 1 common and from here also we will take out minus 1 common and this minus 1 will come will become 1 as the mod of minus 1 is 1 so we will get d of y x hence the third property is satisfied that d of x y is equal to d of y x now the fourth property now to prove the fourth property we will first of all prove an inequality that mod of a plus b divided by 1 plus mod of a plus b should less should be less than or equal to mod of a divided by 1 plus mod of a plus mod of b divided by 1 plus mod of b now let us prove this inequality consider ft is equal to Consider ft is equal to t plus 1 by t. Now when we will do differentiation we will get 1 plus 1 by t square and it will always be greater than or equal to 0 as f is an increasing function. So therefore we know that mod of a plus b is less than or equal to mod of a plus mod of b. So f of mod of a plus b is less than or equal to f of mod of a plus mod of b. Now by definition of f mod of a plus b divided by 1 plus mod of b, mod of a plus b is less than or equal to mod of a plus mod of b divided by 1 plus mod of a mod of a plus b. Now we will separate mod of a and mod of b and we will get this equation and finally we will put a is equal to xk minus zk and b is equal to zk minus yk when we will put this a is, a is equal to xk minus zk b is equal to zk minus yk we will get mod of xk minus yk divided by 1 plus mod of xk minus yk less than or equal to mod of xk minus zk divided by 1 plus mod of xk minus zk plus zk minus yk divided by 1 plus mod of zk minus yk and We will multiply both side by 1 by 2 k and taking summation we get summation 1 by 2 k mod of x k minus y k divided by 1 plus mod of x k minus y k is less than or equal to summation k is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by 2 k mod of x k minus z k divided by 1 plus mod of x k minus z k plus summation k is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by 2 k into summation of x k minus y k divided by 1 plus mod of x k minus y k and this is nothing this is d of x comma y and this is d of x comma z and this is d of z comma y hence d of x y is less than or equal to d of x z plus d of z y hence d is a metric now the last step is that we have to prove that d is a normed linear space and to prove that d d is not a not no, is not a normed linear space we will sub, <coughs> we will consider that d is induced by a norm on s then d of x y 
is equal to norm of x minus y. Therefore, all scalars alpha and x comma y belongs to S. It must satisfy d of alpha x comma alpha y is equal to mod of alpha x minus alpha y. Now alpha is common in uh, both these, so alpha will. Now we will take alpha common and alpha will come outside the norm and we will get mode of alpha into norm of x minus y and finally we will prove that LHS and RHS are not equal. Now first of all consider left hand side. The left hand side says that t of alpha x Come alpha is equal to summation k is equal to infinity 1 by 2k into mod of alpha x k minus alpha of y k divided by 1 plus mod of alpha x k minus alpha y k. We will take out alpha common from this and we will get this equation. Now taking right hand side that is mod of alpha dxy we get mod of alpha into summation k is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by 2k mod of xk minus yk divided by 1 plus mod of xk minus yk. Now from here we obtain that LHS is not equal to RHS thus our supposition is wrong therefore given midfix space is not a normed linear space and hence we have proved that every normed linear space is a metric space but every metric space need not be a normed linear space i hope you have understood the result very well so thank you